Hey, it's Davey P here from Lake Country Manufacturing, and this week we're going to be detailing this 1965 Splitter Mustang built by the Ring Brothers. A few weeks ago, we, uh, a guy named Mike called me. He said he had a 1965 Mustang that was really nice that he wanted to take to some MCA shows, which is the Mustang Club of America. And he said he needed this car detailed in and out and to a very, very high level. Um, it's a Ring Brothers built car. So what's even better, it, it came from a recommendation. Um, the last few years, I've had the honor, along with Lake Country, to prep uh, some of the Ring Brothers vehicles for SEMA and this one was actually for SEMA 2015 and this was not a car that I worked on. So now we get a chance to work on this car too. Um, it's very, very, very cool. This car was built um, to resemble a European theme. So if you look at the paintwork, um, it has kind of a, a European aspect to it and then that gets um, paired with some of the interior bits too. So it's got some Recaro seats that keep the shape and form or look of some of the those traditional Mustang seats, but then also with the high bolsters and that European Recaro flare. It's kind of something that I would see in an old Volkswagen, but um, really sets this car off and makes it look nice. Um, every single piece of this car has been touched, um, and that means that we need to touch every single piece of this car. So everything from the underside, the wheels, the wheel wells, the engine bay, um, the interior and the exterior need to be fully cleaned and polished um, to get it show car ready. And they rate these cars on a very, very, very high level. So today we're gonna to be focusing on the interior and the engine bay of this car. We wanna clean these areas first because we want to have everything on the car cleaned before we go and polish the paint. So we're gonna clean up the interior of the engine bay. We're gonna clean up the carpets and all the interior here. This vehicle really only has about 4,000 miles on it, which sounds like pretty much brand new, but these are some of the most difficult interiors for me to detail or clean, partially because they look clean. Um, it's hard to clean something that looks clean and make sure that you got literally everything. In the interior and well actually the engine bay as well we're going to use a number of tools and we're actually going to use some of the same tools so we're obviously we're going to use some steam. Uh, we've got two different heads that we use. One is just a tip with some boar's hair brush. Uh, we'll use this on a couple areas, maybe in the wheel wells, but to be honest with you, we're not gonna steam or scrub this much. If anything, we'll just use it to spray and steam um, into some areas or cracks that we might not be able to reach or help clean out some areas. Um, for the carpet or for the upholstery on the floorboards, we're actually gonna steam it. Um, we use a rag company, Terry, carry towel um, for our steaming process and also for our interior detailing. These towels are re really nice and absorbent, um, inexpensive, so they are uh, reasonable to be using on the interior of the car and don't cost you a fortune, but are still a high quality towel. If we need any cleaners, we're typically gonna be using our APC, just a, a regular all-purpose cleaner for interior detailing. Um, we do have CarPro inside um, if we need it or need a different cleaner for some reason, but overall we're just doing a very, very light cleaning and wipe down on the interior and conditioning a few parts if necessary. Uh, we're gonna avoid um, conditioning things in this vehicle because we want them to look factory clean, brand new, um, but we might need to condition a couple things just to make them look right, um, and we'll address that as we go through the process. When we're cleaning the door panels and the different things, we use a bunch of different tools and brushes. So um, along with our steam, we use compressed air. Compressed air helps us blow out some of the water and cleaner in areas that we've brushed in and helps us get out dust and other things in those areas. We've got a number of different brushes along with one of these. This is a Lake Country foam on a stick. Um, these things are good for cleaning inside grills and a few different areas. 
um, whether you put polish on them or whether you put cleaner on them. But this will be a tool that we'll use to get into some of the areas along with our different brush selection. So I really like these really small detail factory brushes. We've got one that's real nice and soft. We use this for dusting and getting areas just to clean off of the dust in, in some of those areas for actually cleaning with our all-purpose cleaner. We'll use this more coarse brush. So we'll spray our cleaner, brush it in really nice, and then we'll steam that area out and then blow it with air to make sure that it's completely dried and that there's nothing left over in there. Um, some of our more aggressive areas, we'll use this toothbrush style boar's hair brush. Um, it's a little bit more aggressive than something like this, but at the same time, uh, the boar's hair bristles make it nice and soft and avoid scratching. Um, and we just have our larger interior brush. So anything where our, our little detail factory brushes don't work um, or are too small, we're gonna use our, our larger brush to help clean those areas. And speaking of that, we have a, a hole in the front fender and when we're cleaning this door, we realize that some of the rocks and debris have come up through that hole and are wedged and stuck inside the fender. So for that purpose, I brought my uh, handy dandy snap-on uh, radiator pick, um, but it has a very nice, sharp, hard end that hopefully we can pick out some of those rocks without damaging anything. And then along with that, we've got some bamboo skewers. So these are gonna be what we use to get out some of the most stubborn stuff um, because the bamboo will avoid scratching the painted surface.